And speaking of greetings and welcoming, we have our three presidents. We have two vice presidents and our president of the ITC. And I just wanted to say a few brief words uh, about our fearless leaders, our three musketeers. These guys are some of the most brilliant and generous people you'll ever meet. Jan Kind is literally working all over the globe on behalf of the Theosophical Movement. And he, um, I don't know how many languages he speaks. Uh, he's counting. And um, he, uh, he works uh, especially with uh, the Theosophical Society in Adyar, as far as I know, but with many other organizations as well. He, um, he is, has this wonderful, amazing Theosophical online journal called Theosophy Forward, which many of you appreciate. It's very successful in the way that so many participate and learn from it. He publishes, in the spirit of the ITC, um, articles from many different streams. So um, that's, um, we are so honored to have Jan Kind here. And um, Herman Vermillion, he is the head of the Theosophical Society Point Loma, and most of his work is in the Netherlands, but he works all over Europe to spread theosophy. He is one of the most dynamic organizers and inspiring organizers, the only guy that I think I could possibly compare him to would be William Kwan Judge in terms of his ability to, to set up so many action things all at once, everywhere. So, um, and also, he literally is a rocket scientist. <laughs> <laughs> so we were very fortunate to have him as vice president. And finally, uh, Gene Jennings is a medical doctor, he's a psychiatrist, he is a dynamic speaker, he's very generous with his time. So many people I know have been helped by him and he gives of his heart and his time and his absolute presence to so many people. And he uh, is an inspiring speaker, not only at different theosophical lodges and at different theosophical occasions, of course, but also at many different conferences that don't have the name of theosophy, but he introduces theosophical ideas uh, to a wide variety of people who may not have heard of these ideas. So he is our president of the ITC. So, uh, without further ado, the three top officers of the ITC International Theosophy Conferences will offer their uh, warmest welcome as well. I will give you Jan Kind first. So, you know, we are very fortunate. We don't have one, we don't have two, but we have three presidents. And, you know, that is quite an experience. But before I um, transmit my greetings and my welcome to you, I must share with you that we have been organizing a number of events and we know how difficult it is to put these things together. And when we arrived here yesterday and we saw the wonderful work the Santa Barbara Lodge has done, we were just so impressed. And I know that, you know, in theosophy, you don't go for the reward. But I always say it is um, our, duty, uh, our duty to give, but it is an art to receive. So please give them a warm applause because they worked around the clock for so many, many months. I don't know how you experience it, but when theosophists meet, there are always cookies and candies, and it is as if, you know, even though you might not have met the person in the flesh for a year or two years, but when you then come together, it is as if you met him yesterday. And, and that feeling I had today, I had not seen Jacques for a year and many others. And then when you come here, it is as if he, um, you know, just con confers in the style like we did it the day before. Uh, the first uh, ITC conference I ever attended was in Julian, some of you were there in 2011. Um, um, Jim and Sally Colbert had set it up and for me that experience was a kind of, uh, you know, opener to, you know, the further developments and I was very happy to join 
and to you know, pay my contribution to this wonderful organization. And I think ever since 2011, um, we had 2012, we went to Wheaton, uh, uh, Alcott, the headquarters of the TSOA. In 2013, a wonderful event organized by Helena Kerakazi in New York, which was really dynamic because we had a lot of meetings going on at the same place. That's where I met Nancy for the first time. Um, after that, we went to the Netherlands. We went below sea level for a couple of years. <laughs> um, we went first to the uh, International Theosophical Center in Naarden, which was really a sort of um, you know, new experience. We started with workshops and we really wanted people to actually participate rather than you know, sitting in a chair and, and, and listening to, to, of course, uh, well first lecturers and it was a very dynamic situation there. Last year we went to the government city of the Netherlands, The Hague, and uh, we had a similar meeting and I'm sure that uh, the meeting that we are going to experience here during the next couple of days, I've got a mosquito in my ear, um, a tree. <laughs> oh that's right. Uh, and I'm sure that this uh, meeting here also will contribute to what ITC stands for. Um, I'm not going to make it very long, I just want to say that we all need to understand that this is all a part of what we would describe as the Theosophical movement. All the various vehicles have deserved their place under the sun. We are not going to create a new Theosophical society because all these various groups have their own impact and from all of them we can learn. And the nice thing is, and I need to share that with you, that we're already you know, working very hard on what we call cross-pollination. Herman, do I pronounce that right? Cross-pollination, right? Cross-pollination, right? Um, just to give you an example, um, a few weeks ago a representative of the Point Loma organization went to Brazil and gave a course on the Seven Jewels in, um, on the Theosophical Institute near Brasilia, which is an ADR-based group. And it went so well that people uh, really liked you know, to repeat that type of event. Um, we have lecturers from other organizations that go to other groups, and there is a, a real exchange going on. And the basic thing is that we can talk about the difference we had in the past. But we all know that what happened in the past, we cannot undo. These are facts. The mosquito. Um, the facts we cannot change. But what we can do is learn from what happened. And we can learn to perform the art of listening without any prejudice. Like, um, like when it was when we first started to read the secret doctrine. We had all those things that we had learned aside, not forget them, but just put them aside in order to absorb you know, what HPB handed out to us. And it's the same with ITC. What happened in the past is something that we cannot undo, but we can learn from it and we can look to the future. And we might be able to imagine that if we think in terms of decades, if we think in terms of centuries, we might as well think that what we are doing here is preparing the path for that theosophical movement the world is so much in need for. So I wish you a wonderful conference. We will be seeing much of each other. We have wonderful speakers. And now I would like to ask Herman to do the welcome from his part. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Jan. I hope you have taken your mosquito with you. <laughs> OK. Well, in the first place, I'm very happy uh, to see a lot of uh, faces I have seen before and a lot of new faces. And I'm very uh, pleased to say that I even have seen a lady refusing from going to in Devachan and will stay with us for a while, I guess. So we really need you and your input, so we are very happy with that. Yeah, let's say a few words. Um, in 2014, we started to make a little bit more structure in our goal. And that is started with the NIDA declaration. 
and we uh, cooked from the NIDA decorations our purposes. And that is a big help to understand what we try to do, because we notice there is still an, sometimes a uh, misunderstanding that we like to be an other theosophical society, but it is absolutely not true. We have really the goal to be a platform and to speak with all the traditions, and especially what we called cross-pollination. In the beginning, Jonathan was not too much pleased with the word cross-pollination, so I promised him to explain it a little bit more. Uh, maybe it's good for you to know that I was uh, keeping bees for about three years, so I have a little bit inside information. And believe me or not, I can tell you there is no bee what is flying out with the idea, today I go for cross-pollination. Yeah? Not I will fly from the roses to the pul uh, tulpins and vice versa. So what is he doing then? And that is something what we have to learn from him. Is that by his nature, he is doing a fine job. And by his nature, he do cross-pollination. So if we have in mind that we have to do cross-pollination, then I think we do the same uh, thing what Christian Church was doing for a very long time, and that will not work. So what we have to do is, we have to be theosophists in the full meaning of the word. We have to work together. We like to set the theosophy, the teachings, in the right place in this world. And what we have to do is, we have to work. We have to work together. We work together not as a goal, but just as a path we have to go. And I have learned over the years that by working together is the best cross-pollination what you can think of. By just showing how you can do something, how you can understand the teachings. And I can tell you that uh, in the last years I have given some lectures from different or for, for different organizations. And then you're standing there and then you have to realize that you have to speak outside your own tradition to be sure that you used words what will be received very well. So, and that is a way of learning and cooperating with each other what we really should stimulate. And then you see that theosophy is not only study. Theosophy is bringing it into practice. Santa Barbara Group have done a group has done a great job by setting up this uh, conference, and we know from own experience that there is a lot of work involved in this, and a lot of changing, some people change from idea like shoes, so you have to keep up with them. And, uh, but what is very important to realize that by doing this type of jobs, preferable together, that you learn a lot. You learn not only to study together, but you work together, and that is what the world needs. We have to be what we try to preach. And thank you. I hope that we all work out these conferences in the right way. Social responsibility, you can say, is not the core business, but it is the core of theosophy. Oh, you have huh? I don't know if that's working. Well, good evening or afternoon. Hello, hi, glad to see everybody. And I will tell you why there are three presidents. They know I like to talk. So they've said most of what I would think of saying, so they've left me little to say, so that I will not be up here long. But let me just bring out maybe two or three points. One is, personally, I can never think of theosophy without thinking of what Madame Blavatsky wrote in The Secret Doctrine about the great initiator and the silent watcher being the root base for every aspect of true esoteric initiation that could ever occur globally. So to that being and those souls I believe we owe recognition and a great deal of thanks, because without them, this wouldn't be. The second idea is one that comes from H.P. Blavatsky's article, The Beacon Light of the Unknown. 
And it has to bear on the idea of what ITC is really about. And she says point blank that we need diversity. As Jan said, each tradition has its own business to do. And the way she explains that is by saying that there are seven colors. Each of those seven colors belong to the spectrum of theosophy. If, when we are putting together a group, a family, a motion, a movement, we have individuals from each of the rays, her point then was made that we have access to the entire power of theosophy. So, ITC, in terms of simply reintroducing a very familiar idea, friendship, is only providing a platform for friendship to occur. ITC, as Herman said, is not really theosophy. And so there's nothing to sell, there's no power structure, there is no argument with, I know more than you. It, we don't even talk theosophy, do we, in the meetings? We talk about how do we provide a platform for individuals such as all of us to simply come together as friends of theosophy to discuss theosophical ideas and perhaps become so energized that going back home, we feel that, wow, it's okay to reach out beyond boundaries and barriers that don't exist anywhere other than in our heads. And so ITC clearly says, welcome to you all. And if we really run this program correctly by staying out of the way, what will happen is that there will be a wonderful exchange, a wonderful sharing, and as a result of that, a wonderful blossoming of fruit that perhaps as a product from the meeting this afternoon, we can take back to wherever it is that we come from and share. So thank you, welcome for coming, and hopefully this is a wonderful time for you all. <laughs>